thank you to Shiro Koi for your support on Patreon. We still have two sights to see. The day is young. Come on, don't give up. His eyes brighten and he smiles back weakly. He puts out his cigarette and cranes his head, looking for street signs. Well, in that case, we're already on 33rd. We just have to walk down to 5th Avenue and we'll be at the Empire State Building. He points up at the giant building that's been looming over us the whole day. I even saw it from Mark's apartment miles away from here. Unlike the other skyscrapers I've seen, it doesn't instill the same primal sense of fear in me. Despite being the tallest, something about it being that big just makes sense cosmically. Like Big Ben or the Eiffel Tower. We approach the base and there are small groups of people scattered about, some taking pictures while others simply gawk at it. Let's get a better look, shall we? I nod and walk over to the doors. I stand as close to them as I can as I can and look straight up. Oh, that's trippy. I can't even see the top anymore. Mark comes to join me and chuckles. Would you believe the elevator to the top takes less time than my buildings? <laughs> There's no way that's true. Wait, does it? There's only one way to find out. I feel a tap on my shoulder and turn around to see a mouse dressed in what looks like a bellhop's uniform, only with a military-style cap. Welcome to the world's tallest building. Would you like a photo? We glance at each other and nod in unison. I love mementos like these, even if it'll take a while to get the film developed. Oh boy. <laughs> All right, you two, stand right on this spot. Mm hmm, perfect. Say cheese. One, two, oh God, three. Good job. I'm seeing stars. I wasn't expecting that little camera to have such a big flash. So where do you go to pick up the photos? As I say this, I notice a white square come out of the front of it. She pulls it out and starts shaking it. Just give me a minute here and it'll be good to go. Huh? Aren't Polaroids great? Uh, yeah, totally. Gray, are you saying you've never taken an instant photo before? I guess I am, yeah. Is that weird? I'm never gonna get used to the upgrade in technology, but... Shouldn't Mark find my reactions a little strange? Nah. Neither way, now you have. That was a little too easy. Are we gonna show up in the picture? Are we or, Oh, we're gonna be a spook. Oh, did I did I say it? Uh, that was a little too easy, sorry. The guy hands me the photo and runs off, spotting another group who just arrived. They didn't get paid. They could at least extort 50 bucks out of us or else call the cops. What the hell, isn't this New York? Wow, a color model too. Not too shabby. <laughs> Let me take a look. It hangs over me and I angle so he can see it. Oh, hey, we did show up. Look at that. That's lovely. <laughs> we look so... We look so fucking... I love this. This is so nice. Wow, it really is instant. And in color. It's like a mini painting. And I showed up in it. Guess it's only reflections that are affected. Wonder why that is. I should have thought of that before, actually. This could have ruined everything if it, I, it ended up showing Mark standing alone. At least I know what I look like now. Not ideal, but not a wreck either. Mark looks good, though, no surprise. That was such a lovely picture. Mark pockets the photo and we head inside the, to the lobby. Everything is made of marble and brass and the Art Deco designs fit perfectly with the color scheme. Welcome! First time here? <laughs> yes, actually. I have a question. Of course, ask away. I look around to make sure Mark's not in earshot. I see him admiring some framed photos on the other side of the room, so I think I'm in the clear. I lean in to whisper. Is it true? Go on. 
that they used to land d what dirigibles dirigibles I'm gonna have to look that one up oh it's a uh, it's a uh, kind of an airship that it kind of looks like a zeppelin of some kind that they used to land dirigibles on the roof of this building uh, the man I came with and kept insisting it on the whole, <laughs> insisting it the whole way here the Martin laughs elbowing his co-worker and just as she chuckles along with him oh boy suckers born every minute excuse me he wipes a tear away and reaches under the desk pulling out a photo to show me I gasp. It shows a blimp almost the length of the building docking at the top. Some wise guy docked at this back in the 30s and got a rumor going. Sure, there were talks about it, but it's obviously a terrible idea. Aircraft's in tall. Wow. Wow. Okay. <laughs> I mean... Jesus Christ. I know it's been 20 years, but fucking hell. Way to invoke that. Holy Christ. Aircrafts and tall buildings don't mix. Oh my. I'm chuckling because I'm uncomfortable. <laughs> I nod, wondering if Mark, wondering if Mark was pulling my leg or genuinely believed the rumor. I thank the attendant and walk over to the sitting area Mark's standing by. He's standing by the sitting area, as opposed to sitting by the standing area. He's staring at the schematics of the building's construction. I'd seen plenty of those in my dad's workshop. Contractors, contractors would bring over plans and go over the required materials piece by piece before he'd settle on a price. Okay, so we know his childhood home was a plantation. And his dad was a construction magnate? I guess? Interesting? That's not a combination I've heard of a lot, but granted, I'm not... I don't fucking know. Shit, man. <laughs> I'm an idiot. Are you a fan of blueprints? Yep. They have this lovely mathematical quality to them. Where art meets function, you know? There's a piece in our museum's vault that I've begged Miss C Mr. Cartwright to put up for auction, but he just won't budge. That's a bummer. Yes, well, I have a plan. I asked Lauren, she's the head of the conservation department, to select it for our holiday party's charity auction. Wow, she can she do that? Technically, her role as event coordinator overrides our bosses, since the auction is being funded by our non-for-profit organization. It's foolproof. He smiles slyly, clearly proud of his master plan coming together. I guess Mark can be a little conniving if he, when he needs to be. I don't mind, as long as he doesn't try to use that big brain to mess with me. Well, we've seen everything in the lobby. What's next? He points at a row of gilded elevators behind me. Only way is up! Come on! We head into one of the elevators, and to my surprise, it has an attendant waiting inside. Guess it's not a dead courier after all. Observation deck, please. Doors close, and the machine lurches upwards faster than expected. I'm imagining the floors that must be zipping by second by second, the grip and the grip of the handrail feeling dizzy. And grip the handrail feeling dizzy. I was wrong. This is still terrifying. Big buildings are bad. Oh, jeez, are you all right? <laughs> you know what always makes me feel better? What? On the trip back down, you can jump and get some hang time for a second. Pretty cool, huh? Don't jump in old-timey elevators, dude. Those are things. That, those things are held together with like string cheese and prayers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very cool. This is a terrible idea. I'm seriously close to losing my lunch. I should keep bags in there. I went to the, um, I went to Sears Tower when I first visited Chicago before I moved up here, and, uh, um, 
that elevator ride sucked ass. Not because, uh, you know, the, the, the speed, whatever, was actually pretty manageable. But they, since I was there with my school, they packed like five billion of us in this fucking elevator. It sucked. Ugh. Ugh, it's, ugh, it's terrible. Thankfully, I feel the elevator stop and the doors open. I walk out and get hit with a blast of cold air. The strong wind practically pushing me back into the car. Oh, God, we're outside. Why are we outside? Come on, you can see the whole city from up here. I cling against the wall for dear life. We're on the roof. The top floor couldn't even see from the ground. From this perspective, it looks like we're floating in the sky. All the other buildings are gone. Mark bravely walks out towards the flimsy-looking guardrail to take a look. Mark, be careful! Don't worry. Come on, let's go try to find. Let's try to find my house. Even just imagining looking down from there sends a shiver, sends sends a shiver through my body, and I slide down the wall to the cold floor. I don't think this is a great idea. Ooh, oh man, what what a rush! <laughs> Two completely different energies here. <laughs> Can you believe they used to land blimps up here? Help! <laughs> huh? Oh, shit. <laughs> In his fucking face. He runs back over and helps me up. I can't help but cling to his sleeves like a child. Feels like the next strong breeze will knock me off the side and send me tumbling to my death. Why didn't you tell me you were afraid of heights? I've never been this high up before. What about a plane? You never flown on a plane? No! I'm getting annoyed. Why is he making this sound like my fault again? I just want to get the hell off this roof before I pass out. I'm going back down. Sorry, I can't do this. Hey, it's fine. Let's go together, okay? And nod, and we wait for the elevator to come back up. He stands behind and shields me from the wind with his broad back, his long arms caging me in like a safety net. It works, and thankfully the next elevator is also empty. We rush in and ride back down. Mark resists trying out his hang time trick and continues to rub my back until we reach the ground floor. <sighs> Solid earth. I'm shivering as, my, as I walk by the welcome booth. The Martin shoots Mark a dirty look, silently accusing him of traumatizing me. He mouths, sorry, and holds the door open. Oh, Jesus, there he goes. I race out of the building and walk over to a trash can, hacking up all the... Ew. That informed him... Ew. Ew. Mark waits patiently for me by the door, looking upset once again. All right, so this didn't go very well either. At least I can brag to everyone back home that I stood 102 stories high and lived. <laughs> A teen would just be impressed I didn't try to jump off. Wow! Fucking hell. When I can breathe easy again, I walk over to the big lug and gently pu punch his shoulder. Hey. I feel a lot better now. Thanks. Thanks. I'm the one that put you through this in the first place. I feel awful. I feel awful. This one's on me, all right? Just no more tall buildings. I guess we're not going into the Statue of Liberty, then. Not even my house. One exception. <laughs> he straightens up and rewards me with another big smile. I guess we don't have to go to the top of the Statue of Liberty, then. I gulp, knowing that another surprise like that would have fully sent me over the edge. Maybe we should just skip that for now, as fun as that sounds. Hmm. Well, that was the final stop on my tour. What else do you want to do? Before I can answer, my stomach growls. That fucking face. Lunch would be nice. <laughs> I could go for some chow, too. Let me find a phone and I'll call up one of my usual places for a reservation. Wow, a reservation? Seems awfully fancy for a casual day out, but I guess this is how Mar just how Mark operates. Back at the manor, we had cooks fish fixing our meals, but lunch was hardly ever more than a soup or a sandwich. 
We walk a few blocks and find a public phone booth. Mark thumbs in a nickel and whips out a little notebook full of phone numbers. What are you feeling like? French? Italian? Maybe Asian fusion? Uh, French sounds good? He is from Nolens. It's the only one I'm really qualified to judge. Teen and Jean cooked up a, men, a mean Cajun fry every Sunday after church. And every now and then they'd try some authentic French recipes from cookbooks. Hello, Yvonne. Uh, yes, it's Mark. I'm... Well, what do you mean there's a private party? I've been dining with you for eight years now. Surely you can may find me at... Excuse me, you want to say that one again? Oh, oh really? Well, up yours too, pal! He slams the receiver down so hard it rattles the windows and storms out, leaning against the booth with his arms crossed, scrambling to pull out another cigarette. No dice? Can you believe they couldn't get us a single table all day? If Raynard had picked up, he would have found us something! Flick, drag, exhale. No clue who this jackass was either. Must have been some new hire who didn't get the memo. Well, <laughs> well, they just lost a loyal customer, Karen. Come on, it's not worth blacklisting the damn place over. It wouldn't be the first place I blacklisted, or rather, who blacklisted me. But yeah, I guess you're right. We still have to eat, don't we? I could try the Blue Bungalow in Central Park. The idea of sitting through another angry call fills me with dread. I hook my arm through Mark's to tug him along so I st and, and I start to walk. <laughs> the fucking expression. Hey, what are you- let's just look around, we can try something new. I don't know anything around here. Yeah, something new! Where's your spirit of adventure? I left it at home. Oh boy. Oh god, that was- that was fucking loaded. I ignore his whining and sniff around, hoping my strongest sense can find us some grub. It was hard to smell past Mark's smokiness, but eventually something sticks out. Savory, fried, creamy. Soda candy. Luncheonette. Over 93 years. Luncheonette. It's a candy shop. Malteds and fountain sodas. I follow my nose. I follow my nose. And end up at the row of at a row of various shops that form a larger luncheonette. Gruff day laborers are waiting in line to grab a quick bite, as well as a few businessmen. Mark's basically a rag doll at this point. I pull them over, trying to find the source of the scent, store by store. Quickly find it. Dana's Polish Kitchen. Let's try this place. I've never had Polish food before. From this dump? I don't want us to get sick. He says that a little too loudly and a few shop owners shooting annoyed glances our way. I wince and try to smile back and let them know I'm on their side. Where is this snobbishness and Mark coming from? Did he forget the little hole in the wall he took me to yesterday? Well, that one wasn't quite like this one. Let's just leave it at that. I see him tapping his foot, eager to leave. Trust me, the best food is always from small places like this. Look at these people, it can't be- Look at all of these people, it can't be that bad. Alright. I ordered a few pierogies and some kielbasa to start with. They sound the most familiar, and I don't want to risk getting something risky when Mark's being so difficult. Alright, that'll be $1.85. Oh shit. I whip out my wallet. It's about 70 cents and a free drink voucher for Jean's bar that would have been <laughs> would be beyond expired by now. Uh, one second. Hey, uh, can I borrow two bucks? Sorry. Huh? Oh, sh sure. He reaches into a coat pocket and hands me a few crumpled bills. There's at least six in there. I guess this is just spare change for him. I grab what I need and run back to pay for our order before sitting down across from him. I should have guessed you wouldn't have any cash on you. My bad. It's all right. Mm hmm. Hey. Yes. You want to know something funny? Sure. 
I'm actually having a great time. How? Today has been a complete disaster. No, it hasn't. Do you know why? Enlighten me. I gently boop his nose and giggle as his ears flick wildly in confusion. Because I'm spending it with you, wise guy. That's enough to make... That's enough to make up for her almost giving you a heart attack. Even a shitty day can be fun if you spend it with a friend. So, you really think of us as friends, then? I can hear his tail thumping against the bench as it wags ferociously. I do! But you'll have to make it through this meal, or I'll start questioning my taste in acquaintances. Deal? Okay, I'll try. For you. There's the mark I recognize. Phew. He shifts mood so quickly, staying on his good side is going to be a key to this all working out. A few minutes later, a man brings our food on plastic trays. The presentation is lacking, but it smells incredible. Six cheese pierogies, each with sour cream and applesauce for dipping, and two long coiled sausages. My mouth is watering already. We dig in and I fall in love immediately. Savory fried dough with salty cheese, sweet caramelized onions, and a hit of sour from the cream makes the perfect combination for a hearty meal during these harsh winter months. Man, I'm on a diet. I, don't eat, I can't even eat Rice Krispies without feeling guilty. I work my way over to the keel boss and I'm surprised by the smoky flavor and, and slight heat. Nothing close to undoy or anything for an occasion kitchen, but enough to be appreciated. I hear Mark moaning into his food, clearly echoing my sentiments. Holy fuck, this is good! And it was so cheap! I can't stop eating! Oh my... Okay, you have to fucking go right to that. Oh god. <laughs> Jesus, okay. Poland, I'm so sorry about World War II, you deserve better. I mean... <laughs> okay. No. There's, there's no way to say this fucking line without it sounding fucking weird. The line is, Poland, I'm so sorry about World War II, you deserve better. Factually correct. Absolutely. But like, you just had a fucking diner, do you gotta bring up the fucking war? <laughs> just enjoy some lunch. Wait a minute. Wait a fucking minute. There's a website on the banner up in the top right corner. Like sealplanetsomething.com. Uh oh, a little immersion breaking in the tiniest of details in one background. Oh god. I have no idea what that means, but yes, justice for Poland. <laughs> oh man. I almost get up to order more, but I don't want to get sick of something so lovely. Quickly polish off our plates and leave our trays at the front. The cashier gives us knowing smirk, having witnessed our religious experience. I thank him and we walk out. Belly's full and mood's greatly improved. Check the clock in a nearby lamppost and see it's only four o'clock. Light's already starting to dim and I feel pretty tired having been on my feet the whole day. I hear Mark yawn and imagine he slept even less than I did, probably having been woken up by me after I wandered into his bedroom during my nightmare. That nightmare. Hey, he feeling tired yet? Yeah, a little. Might have just been the food, but I'm about ready to head home. Me too. Your couch is sounding really good right about now. Hmm... It does sound good. I spot a subway station and recall seeing the same line not far from his apartment. Hey, why don't we take the train? I'm curious about the subway. He looks at the station and then back at me, his nose scrunched up in disgust. Ugh, I don't think that's a good idea. I mean, just about anybody can ride those things. Remember your little encounter with the friendly flasher? It's how most of New York gets around, no? Surely it's great. You're with me now. 
You don't have to put yourself in dangerous situations anymore. I'll get us a cab. But he ignores my protests and walks to the curb. He gets ignored by a few cabs and starts to get pissed off again. God damn it, I guess it wasn't the cigarettes after all. I thought we'd made some progress, but all it takes is one little mishap to set him off. And when he's like that, he says things that are completely out of character. Especially that comment about people who ride the train. He was speaking so charitably about the homeless yesterday, and now he doesn't want to risk riding in the same car as one? Did he reach out to me for another reason? Was that whole thing an act to gain my trust? I, I mean, kind-hearted or not, you don't bring strangers home without a good reason. And so readily accepting all the odd things I say by accident. Surely that must have set off some red flags by now. Twenty minutes pass and the sun's practically set. Manages to finally hail us a taxi after working through a few cigarettes while pacing in circles angrily. I reluctantly, sc I reluctantly scoot in next to Mark as he's sternly giving the cabby directions. I start to zone out, the calming purr of the engine putting me into a trance once again. Mark's voice, now hoarse from yelling, begins to fade out. Oh, oh, oh what the fuck? Hold up the- wait a fucking second. I didn't click. This just happens automatically. I don't know what is a long drive is. I can bump. I walk across the damp, damp, mossy moorland guided by moonlight. What the fuck? It's a cool night, and the fireflies seem to curtsy at me before continuing their intricate dance. I use my staff to pull myself up onto a nearby ledge, the tiny bells adorning it softly echoing through the clearing. The sky is full of glistening stars, and I sit on my newly found perch gazing upward at the beauty the Great Mother has provided for us. Suddenly, my whiskers twitch, and I sense chaos rising in the distance. The trees are muttering to one another. Something is wrong. I pull myself up onto my staff and s I pull myself up onto my staff and sniff the air. Fire. It's coming from the south, down by the low, 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 I don't know. Oh boy, oh god, what the fuck? I don't know what that is. I have to- whoop, we're back home. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I, have to, uh, I have to- I have to- yeah, <laughs> wake up, we're back home. Man. <laughs> Jesus, with the trippiness of this fucking game. God, my- got a slight crick in my neck. I slept a lot harder than I intended. Surprised Mark didn't wake me up this time.